we were talking about, uh, you know, what we do to ourselves. And I gave you the analogy that one day you wake up and you'll find yourself in a room, in a concrete, whatever it is, with no doors and no windows. And all of a sudden this realization that you are in this thing that has no doors and no windows, all of a sudden petrifies you to the point that you're going to get so panicked that you're going to feel so uh, overwhelmed with anxiety that you're going to give up your life. Of course, the question will be, how did you get into this room when there's no doors and there's no windows? I mean, you know that one day it wasn't like this because you're going to sit down and you're going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I remember things. I remember I used to run, I used to have bicycle, I used to have an electric scooter, I used to go hiking, I used to fall in love, I used to see men and women, dogs and cats, birds. I, I mean, I rem I'm not crazy. I remember I used to want things, but yet there's nothing here. How is it possible? My, my, this is my fantasy, that if one day I was supposedly free, What's going on here? Maybe, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's just my imagination. Or maybe it's just a bad dream that I'm having. But then you touch the floor and it feels like rough concrete. You touch the wall, it feels like rough concrete. You, you... Then no, no, this is this is real. But I remember vividly the world outside. I remember. I mean, listen. Don't tell me. I, I remember this. This is, this is not, it's not my mind. I remember it. Of course, the question is, so you sit there in the corner, you know, like squatting like this. How in the world did I get into this place? Since there's no opening. And then you fall asleep, crying, shivering, miserable, punching the wall, you, after you punch the wall and you break the wall and you're all bleeding and you're in pain and you're desperate on the floor like this and a, and a vision comes to you of like open meadows and hills and maybe overlanding four by four and waterfalls and beautiful women and happy men and food and then all of a sudden the focal point of the dream, usually when we dream, we dream with our eyes out. But something miraculously had happened. The dream, the vision, the, the point of view changes. And it shifts. And all of a sudden you start to see yourself. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, by the way, it's a very interesting thing, which most people can't. Somebody tells you, oh yeah, I can, you can't. Try to commend yourself before you go to sleep to look at your hand. In your dream. In your dream. Tell yourself, okay, I want to see my hand. So lift your hand and in a way control that. See if that's possible. And the more advanced you will be, the more you'll be able to control your dreams, the more meaning the dream will have. But here somebody does this to you, kind of enter into your head, and he shifts the camera. And all of a sudden you see yourself, and you see yourself sitting, happy, smiling, people around you, maybe you have like a little picnic thing around you, and, and you find yourself, you said, oh my goodness, that's, that's me. And now all of a sudden you realize, you start collecting little stones, and collecting, and collecting, and so on and so forth. And before you know, you are possessed 
by putting brick after brick, stone after stone, until you realize you build your prison yourself from within. The room, nobody put you into this room. You simply build this compound around yourself. You build a prison around yourself. At the beginning it was little things. Maybe there were little some mosquitoes. Maybe there were some bees or hornets. Maybe there was somebody who was eating next to you and it was bothering you when it was chewing out loud. So you felt that if you build a little wall over there, that's going to bother stop. And then somebody else, and then the rains. Oh, it's raining. Oh, too, oh, too much sun. So let me build a roof up. And before you know, you build your own prison from within. And then you wake up and you say, oh my goodness, what have I done? How do I get out of here now? I can't. This is really fortified. So what happens? You still have people to care about you on the world outside. Because you realize that this world is not. And you hear the voices. You hear somebody calling you. And they said to you, Schmandrick, here, let me help you. And the guy from outside comes. And he takes a little, he takes a chisel and able to take a break from the wool that you build all around you. And you see the light coming in. He says, oh, that's good. There's some light. I don't have to do much. He said, telling you, listen, start taking the bricks out. Be free again. No, 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 I'm okay here. It's not, it's, as long as I have some sound. That analogy is to us, to what we do to ourselves. We imprison ourselves with fantasies, with desires, with fears, with whatever you want, until one day you wake up and you realize that you are alone in the prison in which you had built yourself. So my suggestion to you is stop building walls, stop living out of fear, Stop doing all those things that everybody tells you to do and be responsible and doing this and don't do this and don't do that. Live life there. Be ready for life. Everybody says, yeah, I want to have the good life. You don't want to have the good life. You want to be protected from the elements. Then you wake up, you're in a dream. And the dream becomes a reality and the reality is that you're in a prison. And somebody would, sh would sh stretch his hand to you to help you. He would say, no, 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 I'm okay, I don't want to. And that's the most sad thing out there, that you, uh, you are a prisoner in a prison in which you build yourself, where you are the prisoner, the warden, and the executioner as well. Coming to learn Torah allows you to open your mind, to see things. It teaches you emuna, as we learned yesterday. Ikar tikuno shel adam. The tikkun of the, of the person does not come by rolling on snow naked 484 times, but not fasting, but not you know slapping on yourself, or not doing this, or not doing that. The ikar tikkun of the neshama of the person is learning Torah. When you go out of the Bet Medrash, you are going into a prison because that world is, is controlled by people who them themselves have fears, them themselves have desires, and all kind of different things that they have. When you come to the world of Torah, when you come to the world of Torah, you are in the world of Hashem, of Ensof, of eternal freedom. Why would you leave that? That's a different question. Why well, won't you come in there? It's probably because you're fearful, you don't have emuna, you don't believe in Hashem, you don't believe in doing the right thing, you believe in society, but you don't believe in God. My suggestion to you is enhance your emuna. Listen to Divrei Chachamim. Anything that my rabbi told me, I never regret it. Never. Everything that I did for Torah, never regretted it. Everything I did, other things, always regretted it. Always a reason why I could have done this better, or I could have done this instead of that. 
When it comes down to learning Torah, what could you have done better than learning Torah? I, mean, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Make the Torah the focal point of your life. Make the Vrecha Chachamim the beacon in which would lead you into, your, into the darkness of your life. And when somebody comes to stretch ahead to you to make you free, don't hit their hand. Help them take the, the bricks down. Help them take the wall down. Help them break away from the, from the prison in which you put yourself and go into freedom. And again, I'm telling you, most people don't want to be free. Most people want to be told what to think, told what to act, told what to do. Nobody wants to be a, a, a free person. Nobody wants to be a commander. You don't want to do that. You're not ready for the Mashiach time. That's the bottom line. So stop being afraid. The whole entire world is a very narrow bridge, like they have, you know, in, in China, they're going like this. And what's the best thing when you, the only thing to do when you're going on the bridge of Nachman says, Don't be fearful because fear will, you know, it's like a kid. He's afraid of the unknown. So he thinks that there are demons and monsters and all it is is just, a, you know, I remember, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a private story. When I was a kid, there used to be a lot of terrorist uh, attacks in Israel, and they were killing, breaking into homes, you know, in Nahria, and Kiryat Shmone, and places like this. You know, I was all kids my age. I was young, because it was before Bar Mitzvah. And in my house, we had a small house. So there was a, a sliding door that was made out of glass, but the glass was, you know, now the, you know, it's a special glass like this, like wavy glass like this. And my mother used to put her iron board right behind it. Now, if you look at the iron board, it looks like a person. And especially if you have the glass like this and the light, the light comes out. So I used to wake up in the middle of the night, petrified. There's some kind of terrorist in my house. And I always used to be petrified. I used to go to my mother, oh, mommy, mommy. And one night I said, okay, wait, 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 hold on a second. I know what this is. This is the iron board. So I got up, I moved this, took the iron board, moved it, and that was the end of it. Don't be fearful. And if you're afraid of something, it's okay. It's okay to be afraid. But look at fear into the eye, and you understand it's either me or him. It's very scary. Sometimes it's scary. You're in a situation that you know, you're afraid. It's okay to be afraid. But the whole point of fear is to know to overcome it. Because it's me or it. So when I was fearful at night, or, you know, like I had to go, you know, I would not run. I used to run. You know, as a kid, I used to run. Make it fast. But then I said, no. I'm going to walk slow. I'm going to breathe. And then I saw nothing ever happen. Oh, so then I would walk in with a swagger. You know? It's okay to be afraid. But don't let fear paralyze you. Look it in the eye and keep on walking. Control your breath, control your thought. You have, you have all the tools to succeed. But one thing for sure, do not build your own prison. Have a wonderful free day.